Hello to all my little baby reindeers out there. My name is EJ and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to be discussing the brand new Netflix series, Baby Reindeer. But instead of a, a normal review, which we will be reviewing it here, we're also going to talk about the very complicated, the very layered, the very somewhat controversial sexuality of this show, especially our main character, Donnie. So we have a lot to get into. So let's get into the video right now. You know, Baby Reindeer has exploded onto the scene unlike any other show this year. Yes, there's been shows like Shogun and Them, The Scare, that have had conversations around it, but none like Baby Reindeer. This blew up, and honestly, it's deservingly so, because this show is so damn good. I'm not usually a binge watcher, but with like 7, 8 episodes, 30, 40 minutes, it's easy to get into, it's easy to watch. Though the subject matter, the material, that makes it a bit harder. I had to take a break in between like the last two episodes just to like give myself time to catch up, prepare myself for what the hell was happening, especially after episode four, which takes you through a very complicated, a very hard hitting subject that our lead character Donnie goes through. I absolutely loved what Baby Reindeer presented. So what is this show? If you've heard about it, you may know a little bit about it, but if you're finding this video and just wanting to see anything about it, one, I will warn you, there will be spoilers later on, but for the most part, Baby Reindeer is a simple story about a bartender trying to be a comedian who meets a woman by chance. He gives her a cup of tea at the bar and she becomes obsessed with him. She is like, honestly a pro stalker she's convicted she is really good at stalking so her you know Martha's relationship with Donnie unfolds in front of us and we're seeing Donnie deal with the ramifications of maybe leading her on a little bit maybe you know not reporting her when he should have there's a lot of things that fall into place that makes Donnie and Martha's relationship very very complicated but one of the most complicated one of the most interesting parts of this show is the conversation around Donnie's sexuality Richard Gadd is an openly bisexual actor, creator, writer. He is the one behind the show. So I will say this is not to discuss the sexuality of the real life person. Yes, this is based on his life and I'm not going to discredit anything there, but the show presents Donnie in a very interesting way. The Richard, you know, again, Richard as a person, bisexual out. I'm not here to speculate about his own personal one, but I'm looking at the show. I'm looking at the character and kind of diving into it and where I feel his sexuality lands, where I feel like it's a big conversation point, and why I feel like it's honestly representation we have not seen too often. The last time I did a complicated sexuality video was about Saltburn, which was equally bisexual, equally hot, and, you know, interesting, but this one, you know, as fun and campy as that movie was, this is hard-hitting. There's going to be a lot of serious topics I discuss in this video, so I will say some content and trigger warning. This is going to get hard hitting because the show discusses abuse, you know, grooming, things like that, that all kind of fall into it. So one, I will not be here to discuss Martha, her insanity, her brilliance. I mean, what was her, uh, Jessica Gunning's performance here? top tier give her the awards here but i'm going to focus on the sexuality aspect of it is it queer or not the imperfect representation and honestly how great it is to see bisexuality even though as imperfect as it is to see bisexuality depicted like this so there's a lot to get into let's get into all of that and more who knows there, there's so many feelings i have i'll discover new feelings as i'm talking about it but let's get into it right now one of the more interesting notions of this for me is, is the show queer or not? I would not really particularly label this an LGBT show, though that's where it gets a bit complicated because Donnie's character is discovering his sexuality. He's exploring a lot. He's also dating a trans woman, a straight man dating a trans woman. What does that make his sexuality? For me, that's just a straight dude, but that, again, it's layered. There's a lot going on here that's really hard to pinpoint, to really discuss without offending somebody without really starting a pandora's box of conversations but i would say the the show does not feel particularly queer for me because it isn't fully an exploration on his sexuality it is mostly focused on donnie's dealing with martha stalking of him though you know again a big part of this is his relationship with terry his you know his uh you know scaredness i would say i don't want to say scaredness but you know his 
his shame, his guilt that he feels about dating a trans woman, keeping her in the closet with him as well. And there's a lot of stuff that's really interesting here. But again, I would not label this a queer show. This isn't like a, a heart stopper, a pose, you know, any of those kind of shows that really do focus on the struggles of queer people at, you know, as a, a whole. This is a very individual experience. This is very Richard Gadd slash uh, Donnie's experience. Donnie is so interesting, so complex. And what I really love about it is it really discusses the messiness of your early 20s, where you're discovering yourself, where you're really finding out who you are, what you like, what you're into. And it's not an easy road. It will take you down some paths. Now, unfortunately, with the Donnie's character, we'll, we'll get into it next. It's not easy for him and his exploration of his sexuality is attached to some trauma and that's a whole different conversation in itself. We'll talk about that in a moment as well, but I really wanted to kind of focus on that first pinpoint. Is this a queer show or not? Like much like Saltburn, I considered Saltburn a queer film. A lot of people did not. Now, I don't particularly consider Baby Ranger a queer show, but some people will. And I want to present that with you guys. Where do you feel it stands? What's your feelings on the sexuality of this? Is it queer or not? as a whole show. Again, we are focusing on Donnie's character, his life, his journey, but would you guys personally say this is a queer show? That's up to debate for a lot of people, but in our next section, we're going to be talking about the imperfect representation and why I feel that that matters. This next section is going to get a bit spoiler filled because I cannot talk about Donnie's sexuality, the sexuality of the show, the journey this character goes through without talking about a key moment that we learn in episode four. So if you're watching the show, the first three episodes, you're truly like, yo, why has Donnie not like called the cops on this woman? Why has he not reported her? The moment he does go to report her, it triggers him into a flashback that we deal with for most of episode four, learning where Donnie started this journey for his life at. So he is a up and coming creator. He's wanting to write. He's a comedian and he's not too great at it. At least not at first Donnie's comedy, uh, comedy sets are definitely not for me. But that's, that's besides the point. We're not talking about the complicated jokes of this movie. We're talking about the sexuality. So Donnie meets an older person in the film industry who essentially just grooms him to be a protege, but grooms him to be a, a victim for this older man's abuse. He takes Donnie under his wing and continues to feed him drugs in order to molest him, always promising him the future in Hollywood, but then berating him the moment the abuse was not happening. It's truly a cycle. So many people have gone through, so many people in the film industry, so many people just in their normal lives. It's a hard hitting thing. And then this leads to, you know, Donnie does continue to go there, even though after he catches him doing some things to him, this leads to Donnie getting essayed, sexually assaulted. And it is a truly traumatic moment for this character. And it leads him down a destructive path. What I really like about this conversation is it's discussing something controversial to some, but a lot of abuse victims, it changes and shifts their sexuality. We oftentimes see, not all the time, but we see women who are abused by men and they often don't want to be touched by men. They don't want to deal with men. So they find companionship in women. And we also see men who are abused by men who either become dramatically homophobic or become sexual deviants where they're having to figure out everything and using sexuality to make themselves feel better, to hurt other people in a way of pushing that abuse further. And we see Donnie kind of fall in the middle of something. He is finding out who he is now because this assault of him really thrusted him into a different mindset. He's sleeping with men, women, anyone in between just to figure out something, just to feel something, just to lose himself a little bit more. It's a destructive path, but it often happens. I've experienced men in my own life where I've seen them have a moment of sexuality discovering and then they are now using drugs. Now they're doing unsafe sexual practices and things like that. So that's where I think the Donnie's character and the imperfect representation is interesting because we're seeing an abuse victim and I'm not going to victim blame him at all, but we see in a victim who all, who even admits that he put himself into positions where this wasn't the greatest thing. And, you know, Donnie's uh, lack of speaking out on this really hurts him 
in the sexuality front, in the relationship with his abuser, and how he handles Martha. It really trickles down. But we see Donnie have a moment where he discovers trans women and he discovers this beautiful woman named Terry who completely shifts his life. She's a woman who does not play with his shit, who doesn't play with the games. He's trying to start off and he likes that. And he begins a relationship with Terry, but he's deeply ashamed and deeply nervous of anyone finding out, of anyone clocking her, of anyone just kind of figuring out from his normal life what he does and who he is. It's really interesting and it's it's the one I love as a queer person seeing a trans woman come in and fix the magical confused boy's life. It's not always a great trope, it's not always healthy, but it's often something we see and I loved that, you know, Terry one played by uh Nava Mao, I believe her name is. What an amazing performance. Terry is one of my favorite characters because she's real. She's layered. She's not this perfect character who comes and waves a wand and fixes Donnie's life. She does a lot of stuff for him, but she also is one attacked by Martha, has to deal with her own gender issues and her own identity. And then there's so much here. There's so much stuff. But I really love that Donnie isn't a perfect character. He's human. He's real. This is the type of characters, the type of stories that we need told because it's not a cookie cutter thing. I know we see a heart stopper and we're like, great, that's great. Or we see something like Femme, another uh, hard hitting queer film or something like Sebastian, Call Me By Your Name. There's so many. Moonlight. There's so many complicated queer stories, but none of them really hit the notes that we saw Richard discuss in Baby, uh, Baby Reindeer with the Donnie character, with his own self, his own life story. It's wild, and I I just love what this did, what this said, and again, it's not perfect, it's messy, but that's what abuse survivors are. That's what queer people are. We're not perfect. We're, we don't have everything figured out. Sometimes our own trauma comes and manifests itself in horrible ways, like allowing a stalker to be in our lives for longer than they need to be. It's a lot, but I really appreciate what this show did and what it has to say. Another note I really like about Baby Reindeer is we're seeing bisexuality in entertainment. This is still a rarity. It's still something we don't often see. And if it is a bisexual person, this is something I have seen people note. They are a chaotic character. Maybe they're, you know, considered greedy or maybe they're sleeping around and not doing it nicely or lying and cheating and stealing behind people's backs. That's often how bisexual people are represented. I'm not saying that that's great. And I'm not saying Donnie is a great I, you know, model citizen of a, what a bisexual man should be, but I really do appreciate that he let it all hang out. He really said, this is what it's like to be a bisexual man. It is hard. I am confused a lot of times. Now, I will say my own sexuality, I figured out I was gay, like eight, and I never worried about it. Oh, you don't like me? Okay, peace. Like, you know what I mean? There, there was a, this struggle that I had that Donnie faces, especially coming out to his parents after he does this big stand-up set and spills his beans. The monologue in episode seven is so hard to watch. It's so cringe, but in the best way possible, because you're seeing raw essence of somebody. You're seeing somebody say, look, I was attacked and you know raped for the most part. And what does that do? Who am I after that? What am I? And it, it, we're seeing this person discover that. And I love that Donnie just says, you know what, at the end, especially coming out to his parents, did you either want a gay or bi son or a dead son? Those were the options. And I mean, the parents in this show, it, it broke my heart. The, the moment where his father confessed his own issues he had growing up, especially in the Catholic Church, I don't have to say anything else there. And then his mother's warmness and his dad doing the, his dad's a very harsh character we see throughout it. The stuff he says to Martha, my goodness, he roasts that woman. I When he says he'll cut off that woman's legs, I was like, yes, dad. But when he's also like, have fun with your transsexual, like it was so cute because that's just the bluntness of him, but he's he's meaning it well. And I love that we saw somebody come out and often, I have to say it, if you guys are still confused by your own sexuality, sometimes y'all put coming out in your head and your heart a bigger deal than it is. He came out, he did all this, his parents accepted him and his life wasn't easy and perfect, but he was able to kind of find a, a spot find who he was. And it, it, it really, once you kind of put all those walls down, say who I am, say what you are and do all that, it pays off in such a amazing and powerful way. And we saw that with uh, Baby Reindeer. We saw him discover himself and we saw his character, though by the end of the show, still messy. The, this man, beyond his sexuality, this boy needs help because he is 
addicted to the drama, addicted to the trouble, but I love and appreciate, again, how imperfect the show is, how imperfect this character is, how imperfect the sexuality is. We want everything wrapped up in a perfect bow so it makes sense for us, but life is not like that. Life is complicated, messy, chaotic, and that's all the stuff that we see in Baby Reindeer. Whoa, this was a much longer video than I planned on doing, but I had a lot of feelings about the show. I absolutely think Baby Reindeer is one of the best shows I've seen this year, but I I just I don't I don't understand so much of like the the stalking aspect, the why Donna's character does this. But what I really appreciated though was how it handled sexuality complicated as it is, but how it handled it and how it made me feel. I have a bisexual partner who I felt saw a lot of himself in this character, and I really appreciate what the show did. So to Richard uh, Gad as a filmmaker, to the team of Netflix, everyone here, thank you. Thank you for making this show as wild and chaotic as it is, as the conversation about stalking and who the real Martha is, all that stuff is its own thing. But as a queer person, Thank you guys for making this show and showing a side of a story, a story we don't often see depicted beautifully in a mainstream capacity in a way that could get a ward season like love. My goodness, this is an important moment for so many people. So thank you to the team of Baby Reindeer and thank you all for watching my video. I absolutely think this show needs to be watched. Go binge it. It is not a hard binge other than the content itself. Watch out for episode four. It's hard hitting. But overall, Baby Reindeer is one of the best shows I've seen this year and one of my favorites that's going to last with me for some time. Share your thoughts down in the comments below give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel because i make videos like this every single week i review american horror story i'll be ranking those seasons i'm going to be revisiting old seasons of ahs i will be discussing other shows you guys want me to talk about so if you know a show if you know a, t a movie let me know down in the comments what do you guys want to see on this channel i'm here for you all to make content but this one was for me i had to make my little baby ranger stuff because this show has like burrowed itself in my head my goodness all right guys comment like subscribe all that jazz and let's talk about baby reindeer and the complicated sexuality right down below